ABSA, going off the beaten track to find solutions. Finance from ABSA, overcoming all obstacles. With less than 100 k's to go to the finish line of a 2007 Sun City 400, Nissan Navarro duo Duncan Foss and Ralph Pitchford were completely in control and just had to bring her home for a victory. Passing back markers who were still on their second lap, these two men were flying along. This duo had not tasted victory since round 7 of 2006 and were ready for a mouthful of it. In the special vehicle class, Alfie Cox had passed 17 other cars on a storming run to get into the lead and second overall in the new motor right bat. Woolridge and Schulthammer were next, and they themselves had a superb drive, finally looking like they were going to open their championship points account. The reigning SP champions just had to bring it home in one piece. But Krobra and Jordan were battling their suspension problems and it slipped to third, a strange sight just of late. Krobra in someone else's dust. <laughs> Sewald and Moller were getting a lot of encouragement from the roadside and were on their way to upsetting a whole lot of big names. They were loading up to record the third fastest time for the last loop. While Cronier and Birkin's Save the Car philosophy was working, they got themselves into the top five in the SP class. But their rearview mirrors was full of a flying Hutchison and Bergman who'd sorted out a lot of their early troubles in the motorite bat, and they were really batting. The same could have been said about the new Total Motorsport crew, Naim Musaji and Rayhan Bodjana. They were strutting their stuff and climbed two places in class for that coveted podium. <laughs> Tollefsen, who's a mountaineer in his spare time, and Quinn were also very consistent, and they picked off cars in front of them with regularity. While others dropped out ahead and behind them, Marsh and Grunewald were up from 21st and 9th overall, a sizzling drive. Their teammates Whitehouse and Langton complained of oversteer, but they were right behind them, also up 13 positions. And the trio of Regent cars was completed by the father and son combination Jan and Hendrik. The cries were leading Class B. Schroeder and Huxtable were up to sixth in the production car class and SP, but were hoping to perhaps pick up one or two more places, but two punctures ended that idea. Taylor and Keith also produced one of the drives of the afternoon and closed the gap to the cries in class B to just 1 minute and 46 seconds, but couldn't get any closer. Ruokon's White Brothers were finishing with gusto, and on the home stretch, they slotted into ninth place in the specials. With a Micker and Excel dealer Toyota of the De Brains taking 7th in the production cars, they started off 63rd in the morning and just kept going smoothly. The absolute bat of Gibson and Brown was also putting together a fine third loop over 180 k's and appropriately wearing number 10, that's where they would eventually finish. Ruokon's racing team got a second finisher to the line as the Brain and Brits wove their way around and over the last obstacles. With a BB Auto team grabbing a top 10 spot with Arnold Duplessis and Yuri Knox nursing the Nissan hard body through. Fisser and LaRue worked their Toyota, nursed it all the way through and won Class E handsomely. It was a great performance. But it was closer than it looked, as George and Sharon Barkhazen in the Blumfontein-based Ruokon Toyota were just 59 seconds behind them and chasing hard. 
Brundle right behind them. He was destined to get some help from Jack Peckham after he'd got stuck. And that's what makes the off-roaders such a refreshing bunch. They'll stop and help a fellow competitor, even if it affects their own chances. Roost Racing's Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer also impressed by getting their Toyota to the line. They were fourth in Class E. And then the emotional story of the day. The Raisonics Nissan of Kutsia Labaskachny may have been looking the worst for wear, but he soloed it up to second in class and a tearful finish back at Sun City. A brave performance for his co-driver, Johan Gerber. The Ford team got their third car to the finish when Harkis and Moore appeared. Despite a few problems, and then this quick stop for some up-to-the-minute information. In Class S, Nick Gosler and Richard Carolyn had finally taken the lead after a race-long battle with Schilling, and they made the most of it. While Schilling and Davies battled a myriad of mechanical problems and lost an hour trying to fix them. Back at Sun City, a packed finish line pavilion greeted Duncan Foss and Rolf Pitchford as they steered the Nissan Navara home to a very popular victory. And even though there was some evidence of an altercation with a very firm object somewhere along the line, the twosome were celebrating their first win in four races. They clocked six hours and 48 minutes and beat all the specials to the line. Two-time off-road champion Alfie Cox brought his navigator Henny Testecha home just three minutes later to claim the special vehicle crown and 25 points for the win. The motorite team had done a great job of sorting out all the little things that a new car produces. <laughs> Cox's joy at mounting a challenge for his umpteenth national title was apparent. He clocked the fastest last lap time of the day for this great finish. Ford were equally gleeful. Ulrich and Schorthammer finally garnered some points. They took second, almost five minutes down on force. And again the Sun City bush, heat and dust was unkind to reigning SA champ Hannes Grobler and his now Francois Jordan. They finished just 19 seconds behind the Ford Dio. But they would have been pleased to keep it all in the family as Foss and Pitchford celebrated a triumphant return to the top of the podium, or at least top of the car. Yeah, you know, we had, we've had such a good weekend. We, we qualified on pole, and uh, I knew we had an advantage this morning. If we could just keep cool, um, keep ahead of the other guys, we had a huge dust advantage. So we just had to go at a really quick pace, but not make any mistakes mistakes uh, and we gradually built up a lead and we had a great race no problems whatsoever and just how did the production cars beat the specials sure i don't know how you know they're so powerful they're so light so i know we got four-wheel drive in comparison to their two-wheel drive but i don't know maybe obviously the conditions suited, suited us um slightly in, in our favor but uh, you know the new bets it was their first outing so i think they had teething problems but We'll take the win, I don't know, they should have beaten us. <laughs> in the motorite enclosure, there was the same gleeful joy as Cox and Hutchison took their new charges out for the first time and produced. Yeah, look, to, to come out with a brand new, two brand new cars, these new Spec 3s, you know, we had our doubts because there's always gremlins in it and uh, it was, that what it was, I mean, we only qualified 18th on the road and Sun City's got to be the worst place you could ever have for dust and I fought through the dust this morning and uh, then the gremlin set in and we had fuel problems and then the well pressure problems and so the whole day it's been soldiering on and uh, I think I got up to third place and then Shamir unfortunately he broke down and then I got up to two minutes of Gary and I think he had gearbox problems so yeah look it's a win doesn't matter what happened to the other guys and uh, 
We've also had our problems today, but to be quite honest, the first time we've motor out this new BAT3, it's fantastic. I mean, you can't ask for better. Woolridge and Ford were also very pleased with finally getting onto the leaderboard. Oh, we had a good day. It was a hard day. It was a hard race, um, but the Ford Ranger ran without a problem from, from day one, uh, from word go. Uh, we battled in the dust this morning, I think, like everybody, but I think starting ninth after the time trial yesterday wasn't the best move, so we... Really, the first lap, the first lap and second lap were so different because we could go so much faster on the second lap, but the dust really held us up, and I think uh, Duncan just got that bit of a gap on us. But then it was just playing a waiting game, you know. We pushed hard when we could, but uh, there were there were traps out there waiting for you all the time with the dust and the big stumps. Uh, probably the roughest Sun City we've ever had. Eh? Really, really rough. And uh, you can see how dry it is. Um, I think we're going to have a, a tough winter here. But uh, how the car ran fine, and uh, yeah, 100%. Castel Toyota's Cornier was pleased to get the Hilux to the line. Yeah, look, it was a, a nice finish for us for a change. Um, we're making some uh, some progress with the vehicle. We had some higgly bits that uh, cost us uh, a good position today. But uh, Cowboys don't cry, and um, I'm really looking forward to the desert race. I think uh, with a positive note, the vehicle is definitely getting better. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Arnold Duplessis and Johan Knox got their first finish of the season and the Polokwane team celebrated. Finally, the first one this year. I've had a lot of trouble uh, in the beginning of the year with breakages and side shells breaking. But I think eventually uh, it came through today. We drove hard. The last lap we decided we started about six minutes before the competition and we decided we'll just take it casual and make sure that they don't get past us. So. Uh, it, uh, we pulled it off and we've got a vehicle here in one piece. That helps. Out of the 74 teams that started, only 42 finished. A testimony to the treachery of the route and the length of the final lap was also no joke. In the top 10 production cars, Nissan and Toyota matched each other with four apiece, while Ford nabbed second and sixth. While Cox was the only special to break the seven hour mark. Silwalt and Miller's fine last lap dragged them all the way up into second, while the Cryer scored their third win in as many races. Until next time, you keep it on the road, we'll keep it off-road. That was the ultimate...